G'day folks. This week's video is gonna be a bit of a uh, hodgepodge of bits and pieces because I've been flat out this week helping some family and also filming out at Hamish's place, giving you a bit of an update on the progress of his system. It's actually gone under a bit of a redesign. I'm working on that video at the moment and I don't feel like I could get it out in time tonight where I'd be happy with it. So I thought I'd give you a quick update instead. A very quick one because I'm also off to puppy school with Jack and then I'm off to Owen's place to film his system for hopefully next week's video. So um, I'll flip the camera around and give you a bit of a quick update on what's going on here. First off, we'll see if we can have a bit of a look at these sleepy fish. Uh, they're not doing a lot at the moment. Being a um, warm area fish, uh, the winter temperatures tend to put them off their feed. Uh, still have the heaters on in there. They're on a timer, so they're only on probably about six to seven hours at a night. Uh, just to keep the water temperature up to around about 17, 18 degrees. So uh, they get a little bit of feed every now and then, but more just to fill their belly as they won't be metabolizing it. Uh, the system as a whole is going really well. So these broccoli here have been doing really well. Very impressed with the way they're going and no um, damage so far, knock on wood, from the cabbage butterfly or the cluster caterpillars that got the uh, other broccoli over under that um, little enclosure over there. So fingers crossed we're going to get a nice second harvest from that lot there. The bok choy, still doing really, really well. We took off a couple for my parents and sister the other day uh, for a stir fry. And we actually forgot to give some to my daughter and Ahanu yesterday. G'day Ahanu, if you're watching, great to meet you. Um, so some more will be coming out of here this week. We really do need to make some way for the bok choy that are over there with the potatoes. You'll get a bit of a quick look at them in the tick. Um, so as soon as these guys are thinned out, we can put some more in here. I was going to do a bit of a comparison test between aquaponics, hydroponic, and soil growing. I just haven't been able to pick up any hydroponic nutrients because I've got none on hand at the moment. So as soon as I do that, I'll start some seeds and we'll start from scratch and do a bit of a comparison from the three of them. Down here on these chives, we are seeing the return of the onion aphid. So these little fellas are actually pretty smart. Um, they like to fall off the leaves as you come for them. So I'm trying to squish as many as we can. They will get a pure crop one, a bit of an aphid spray in a day or two. Uh, not this afternoon because I'm going to be a little bit busy. I'll give you a quick look at these potatoes over here. First pouch is doing really well, We're very happy with that. Uh, there are those broccoli starts that really need to go out but haven't. And yeah, the potatoes have started to take off. This last potato has just sent up its first shoot, but the others in this pouch here are doing okay. So yeah, looks like we're all go for some dual root zone potatoes yet again. I'm in a bit of a hurry, so I'm just gonna cut in a bit of an update. I shot for supporters the other day, uh, just looking at the broccoli in this bed. I knew I should have left this open. I was just in here doing a bit of a clean up. Uh, we do have one rather nice head coming on there, remembering that these guys went in a little bit late. And this plant has already set off a little um, side shoot down the bottom. And I'm wondering if it's because it was so stressed after all the pest attack. Oh, I'm happy to say I have seen no caterpillars since and the new leaves coming through look okay. They also don't look like they've got that deficiency anymore and I'm pretty sure it was a potassium one and that has all been sorted. So pretty chuffed about that. Just over here on the other ones, we have a couple of small heads. I'm really happy with the way they're going um, considering I thought, was thinking we might lose them all. And as you can see that ne necrotic spotting there, if we can focus on it, there we go, uh, from that potassium deficiency has pretty much all cleared itself up. Uh, just looking at the new growth there, so pretty chuffed about that. Now to climb out of here. Jack's up there on the deck and he really wants to come down, but we're in a little bit of a hurry. Uh, so there's a little bit of a uh, catch up on what's going on around here. And sorry that I didn't get a full video published for this week. Uh, if you do want to check out some previous aquaponics videos and you're new to the channel, all you need to do is click on the little link that'll pop up at the end here to a playlist on beginners aquaponics. Uh, if you're feel like supporting the channel you can also buy the backyard aquaponics guide uh, that is a very helpful guide for you folks just getting into aquaponics link as well will pop up at the end quickly thank you very much to everyone who does come along and look at these videos even short ones like this and i'll leave a little bit of a uh, teaser for hamish's video at the end if you want to suss that out and see what's coming next week but i will pretty much will leave it there do hope you're all well and happy in your gardens and aquaponics is booming and i'll catch you later happy growing can I say goodbye, Jack? Where is he? No, he's already gone.
See you folks. Well, to get started, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a look at the shelter this aquapon or these aquaponic systems will be placed under. It's a large greenhouse. Those last two bays there will be left vacant for Nicole's um, tree propagation and plant propagation. And these end three bays here are for Hamish's two aquaponic systems. In the first video, you saw a large tank that he was thinking about using. The plan has been ditched and he's going with a scale back version. So the water in the waste will be exiting out underneath the tank through a 90 millimeter pipe that will have a T fitting on the end. And then a couple of step down fittings that will take it down to a 50 millimeter or two inch line that will run into two separate radial flow settlers two separate ones so he can extend out the retention time by halving the flow rate. So he's trying to get roughly around about an eight minute retention time in the settlers. And to do so, he would need around about a 400 litre filter. And you were saying that these guys have been in there for three months. These guys are only three months old. Uh, when I got them, they were fingerlings from three to five centimetres. Yep. Most of them being about the three centimetres. I did a check on them last weekend and they range from 20 to 30 centimetres now and anywhere from 100 to 300 grams already. Excellent. Then the pouches in the middle. Uh, this is basically, I'm running a test at the moment. So what I've done is I've seeded the pouches and the sand bed at the same time with the same things. Okay. So I want to see whether things will grow a bit quicker in the dual root zone yep. compared into the sand itself. I mean, it's this ongoing argument, sand's God's gift to aqu aquaponics. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sand well, ponics, yeah, sand ponics, uh, yeah. Um, so I just basically wanted to see what the difference would be. So I've done the snow peas over there. Uh, this is snow peas here. At the moment, the sand bed's winning with the snow peas. Yep. Uh, the radishes, they were planted at the same time. I dare say these radishes are slightly winning yep. in the race so far. And then I've got a few lettuce seeds I put in there too. And the lettuce is slightly beating the, the soil one. The soil as well. Yeah. Oh, it's all about, I mean, if, unless, unless you have a crack, you're not going to know, are you? Well, that's it. 